Hey guys, and welcome back to Better C Sharp. Today we're going to be talking about configuration and uh, why it's important, how we integrate it with dependency injection, and the different sources of that. Uh, so let's talk a bit about why it's important. So configuration allows us to change things about the way we run our program without changing the code. Um, and so if you look here, this is the same code we had last time. Uh, we have a few settings in here. Uh, we have the square dot text, and we have these uh, max value and count here that they are hard coded. And so we don't want that because anytime we want to change these, we have to change, we have to recompile the program, and that's no good. Um, the other downfall of this is that uh, we have to construct these things ourselves. And really, what we want to do is we want to have our service provider be able to provide configuration so that we can create a file writer or a random int provider uh, and have them take in a config instead of taking in parameters like this. Because uh, these these parameters in particular should be config based. And uh, not everything will be this way, but uh, for the purposes of this video, that's what we're going to show off. So let's go ahead and start off by making a config and seeing how this can change uh, the way this looks you know, without even uh, bothering the config, the like config frameworks yet. So let's, I like to do this with a, an interface, <laughs> go figure. Uh, so public interface, I config, right? Uh, and then we can do something like, um, you know, for the file writer, maybe uh, string file writer destination. And then, you know, uh, int uh, max, random int, and then random int count. Uh, not exactly sure what's going on here. All right, there we go. Sorry, the caps lock on. Um, and then what we can do now is <clears throat> instead of, instead of taking Instead of constructing these ourselves, what we can do is instead just go file writer um, and get rid of this. And then uh, for random int provider, we can do the same. We can do random int provider. Uh, and what we'll need to do then is we will have to uh, make an iconfig and then we'll have to provide an iconfig to here. So uh, right now we'll just do this, but um, the idea here, make that null. Uh, the idea here is that now we can change uh, file writer or any of these classes really, and we can just say, hey, now we depend on configuration and we no longer have to set up constructors and stuff in in our main, in our build service provider. So uh, let's go ahead and look at what that kind of looks like. Um, let's go to file writer. And so for here, instead of taking in a file name, we'll take an iconfig and we'll set that here. File writer destination, file name. Um, and then, so that's one of them. And then for random int provider, for instance, we probably want to do the same. So I config config, and uh, we do config dot max random int and config dot uh, random int count. <clears throat> okay, so now back here uh, in our build service provider, let's uh, let's go ahead and actually make an implement implementation of this. So public class config. Uh, implements I config right, and <clears throat> go ahead and implement this explicitly. Uh, we'll say get set. And oh, I didn't mean to do explicitly. Try that this way. Okay. So what are we saying here? Not, oh, they're not public. Sorry. All right. So now we have an implementation of config, 
and we can go ahead and create one. So say new config, and we will say uh, file writer destination is going to be, I think it's squared.txt. Um, and then we want to max random int to be 5,000 and uh, random int count be 20. All right, so with that done, now I think we should be able to run this again. See what we get here. All right, so it works. And if we change this, let's just go down to 2 and down to 50. All right, so we've improved here already just because we don't have to explicitly create file writer or random int provider. And uh, if we, for instance, wanted to, uh, you know, add configuration to any of these other classes, we can just do that by adding it to the constructors and we don't have to touch this code at all anymore. So that's great. Um, but the next thing we want to do is actually pull this configuration stuff in from somewhere else. Um, and we're going to look at the first way to do this, which is through uh, configuration providers. So Microsoft has some great uh, some great libraries for doing this. Uh, the configuration libraries that they have are really good. And there are also libraries for taking things in from like a command line arguments and we're going to talk about that too uh, maybe in the next video but maybe in this one we'll see how it goes where are we at for six minutes okay um so let's go ahead and talk about how to pull this stuff in from a config let's go ahead and see what that config would look like so uh you know we might want to do something like uh, app settings.json and uh, let's go ahead and open this and we probably want to do something kind of like um, file writer destination is going to be uh, squared.txt and then max random int is going to be 5000 and random int count will be so this is the configuration file, and this is pretty obvious. It's a JSON file that we want to use to populate this stuff. Um, <clears throat> so if we go and look at uh, our CS proj, we need to add a few references. Um, so we need to uh, we need to do configuration and configuration.finder and also configuration.json. So what these are, configuration is kind of the overall package. It gives you, like I believe, the I configuration interfaces and stuff like that that we'll see in a minute uh, in the configuration builder interface. Um, JSON is one implementation of where to get this configuration from. There's other ones, like you can get uh, the configuration from uh, environment variables or Azure Key Vault. Uh, I'm sure there's others that I don't, even know about. Um, and then binder is uh, gives us a way to turn this stuff into our classes. So our config class, for instance. So that's what binder does. Um, so let's go over here and actually set this up. Uh, I typically put this out into a separate method that just deals with configuration. Uh, we'll probably just do it right here in line for now, though. Um, so let's go ahead and go back to null here. And what we'll do is I configuration. Um, actually, we need to build so that I can grab those packages. OK, and then um, I have to reload OmniSharp because there's like a, you know, it doesn't know those things exist yet until we to really reload. Uh, so I configuration, configuration, uh, and we want to pull in Microsoft uh, configuration extensions, and then we want to say new configuration builder, uh, and then we'll just say dot add JSON file. 
And so then we need to know uh, the path. And so this is going to be our name up there, app settings.json. Uh, it is not uh, optional. Oops. <clears throat> and then we will just call build. So uh, doing this is going to give us our configuration in this configuration interface format. And really what this is, is like a way to kind of probe key value pairs in a way. And like, it's kind of like a big dictionary where some of the values can be more dictionaries. So like a configuration can contain more configurations and stuff like that, I think. I haven't explored this API too much because um, I don't use it that way very often. Um, what I do is I use the binder and uh, what I do is go into here and do something like configuration dot uh, git and we'll just call config here and what this says is because we didn't give it a uh, section so you can say like uh, maybe not uh, but this will use the root object so the entire the entire root object over here um, and it'll try and transfer that into our config class. So that is what's going to happen there. Um, we do need one more thing. Uh, we have to make sure that um, we have to make sure that our configuration file ends up in the directory. So we'll do uh, include is app settings.json and then copy to output directory equals preserve newest. So if you're using Visual Studio, you can just uh, you can just right click on uh, app settings.json in your file tree, your solution explorer, and just uh, Go to properties and you'll see a thing in there that says build action. You want to set it, make sure it's none and copy to output directory, uh, copy if newer. So that'll give you that if you're on Visual Studio. Uh, or you can just edit the project file directly like I am here. So with all of that said, this sh I think should work. Let's see what we get. All right, so we got we got that. Let's see if we now if we move to only two of them. <clears throat> okay, and what you'll notice is we haven't had to recompile anything to do this because this you know this JSON file is not C sharp. It's not a code file. We don't have to recompile anything to now change our behavior. Uh, and so this is what configuration buys us. And when you put it together with um, when you put it together with dependency injection, it really kind of evens everything out to where, you know, now you can have your dependencies be actual config stuff, and it just makes things so easy to, to, to change. Um, so, for instance, if we wanted to, uh, instead of squarer, we wanted to use the constant multiplier, right? So if you guys don't remember this uh, constant multiplier, uh, is another implementation of manipulator and it just takes in a constant value. But we could make this take in an iconfig and set this to something like uh, a constant value, you know? And then, yep, yeah, do that. This is on there. We want to implement that. And hit set. And now we can come over here. And constant value could be, you know, 10. And now if we run this, dot net, dot net run, if I can type. Um, yeah, so we're just multiplying by 10. So you get an extra zero there on the end. So we've, we've changed it in such a way now that it's super easy to just, like, add arguments to your dependencies or to your classes coming directly from configuration. And that's amazing. So that makes things super easy. Um, so 
I think since we're already at 15 minutes, I'm going to wrap the video up here and we'll come back and talk about command line arguments. Uh, number one, because I want to do a little more research. There might be actually a configuration provider that looks at that. I haven't even researched that at all. I use a different one uh, at work. So I'm going to look into that. And then with the next video, we're going to look at bringing in command line arguments and using those as a way to direct the flow of our program by swapping out uh, our services that we provide in our service provider. So look forward to that. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this stuff helps.